I did feel at some point that I deserved some internal peace. It felt like I had gone through so much already in my life. The aim was just to have a peaceful life. My work deals with my own lived experience. Growing up in Cape Town in the 1980s, during the last part of the apartheid era, there's definitely something very meditative about weaving. Doing it for a while, you get lulled into this alternative state. You start watching yourself do it, you're almost on autopilot, and that's kind of the moment we look for, you know, that moment of separation from yourself. There is a tradition in South Africa of weaving. A lot of the rope I use is sold as like washing line rope for the really cheap. The beads, of course, is just the costume jewelry, so not expensive things. For a while now, I've been looking at these domestic spaces, the community that I grew up in, which is a very working class community. The linoleum floor cover was really representative of that community. That's what most people would use in their entire homes. So what we looked at was the pathway that gets created over time in those domestic spaces, depending on how furniture was placed and how people use that space. I always say that I was almost co-opting their stories, trying to figure out my own story by looking at other people's experiences. The desire line itself is maybe for me a step further. So a desire line is an informal pathway that gets created out in an open field, for instance. As people move through, they expose the underlying travel. We use Google Earth to document the desire line that sits between Bontiovo, which is a Cape Colored neighborhood where I grew up in, and our neighboring neighborhood was Langa, which is a black community. And so these desire lines became evidence that people do cross over these boundaries that was laid out. They must have been the first people who decided to take this path that others followed. Recently, in last year, well, I realized that working in an NGO had really informed and enriched my own practice in such a massive way. I wanted to start working with a group of women who uh, just needed some help. And so we approached a refugee center and working with some of the crafters who would typically sell their products to tourists. And with the absence of any tourists during the pandemic, there was no money for them coming in. We created a workshop where we taught the women how to elevate their products. There's a vibrancy, there's always music, there's a lot of dancing. They dance when they're upset, they dance when they're protesting. <laughs> Unfortunately, they call me father, because <laughs> they say I pay for food, so that's why they call me father. <laughs> I grew up in this very difficult environment. There was certainly a lot of conflict within my identity. We ended up being raised by my mom's parents who were Christian, and very religious Christians. But my grandmother loved Islam always this in-between situation, which caused a lot of internal conflict. My father was actually quite abusive physically towards my mom, and unfortunately I witnessed that for the first five years of my life. Raised in the apartheid era, I was classified as Cape Malay, which meant I was like a second-class citizen, so not white, but at least not black. In my early adulthood, I knew that there was a lot I needed to heal and fix. My grandparents were Nama from the Northern Cape. And when we were younger, they would take us down to where they grew up. I remember a few times on these trips, witnessing this real dance. It was mesmerizing. It was mesmerizing watching their feet kick, 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 and there's clouds of dust just coming up. So there's something so beautiful about these figures moving in this cloud as the, the dust rises. And it's what I referenced, at least visually, when I made the installation. People feel connected to the ground, and it really centers around the earth and the dust. They have a deep love for that land. Sufism is the mystical side of Islam. There's this constant flow between what's happening internally and externally, whether it's through projecting onto others things that really comes from within, or whether it's internalizing things that has come from the external. So I kind of set on this journey to heal myself as best I can. Sufism really gave me that platform to reset things 
and start fresh.